Great, so um, welcome Janelle and Deb. Um, thanks for joining the Digital Impact Seminar. Uh, my name is Hugh Benjamin, and um, what I'm gonna do is take you guys through an overview on how to grow your business when it comes to SEO and digital marketing online. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about SEO, digital, digital content, reputation management, and some different growth strategies that you can utilize for your business. So a few of the clients that I've worked with, I've worked with um, some of the ones here that you guys may recognize. Um, I've worked with many different kinds of verticals, everything from real estate to restaurants, uh, sports equipment, different entertainment companies, um, people that do e-commerce, people that have service-based businesses like construction and solar and everything out there. And a lot of people, when they, when they look at digital marketing or SEO, a lot of times people have this question in their mind of, you know, how do you know about my business and how to help me? And so every business is different, but in, when it comes to Google and SEO and getting ranked on Google, um, it comes down to an algorithm. And that algorithm has to do with metrics. It has to do with content. It's a similar formula with all businesses. And the biggest thing is tracking results and getting uh, more traffic and more qualified people to actually contact you. Um, just so you guys know, SEO is not about somebody looking up your name and finding you on Google because if they know your name, they probably already know you and they're probably an existing customer. So the goal is for you guys to get new business when it comes to internet marketing. So let's go to the next slide. Um, perhaps what you guys can do, and some of you guys are on mute, maybe you're not on mute, is you could... Um, type in what kind of business you have and one of your goals that you have over the next year with your business when it comes to internet marketing. And if you guys type that in the chat, then I can see that. And as I cover information, I can even look at your website and give you guys some insights on some things that you might be able to do differently when it comes to internet marketing. Uh, the first thing when it comes to business with marketing is it's important to have the right mindset when you own a company. I know a lot of times business owners start a company because they wanna become profitable and they wanna grow their company. But I find that some businesses fall into trying to save money instead of, instead of trying to make money. So imagine if you, know, you have to pay rent every month of $10,000 for your company. Um, the biggest question to ask yourself is what percentage of your budget of the money that's coming in is going to actually grow your business. So if you are only worried about your expenses and paying your bills, then your company is not going to grow too much. So you need to allocate some funds for marketing when it comes to the internet, Google, whether that be Google AdWords or SEO, whether that be updating your website. Because in this day and age, everybody does business on Google. And if you can take advantage of that, then you can have more business and you can have people find you. You know, what does it take to succeed in business? You know, the internet has definitely changed the way that we do business because besides people finding you with your website, people now are looking at social media. They're looking at your reviews when it comes to, do I want to do business with this person? Can I trust them? You know, are they a business that puts forth you know, their best, best possible impression? Are they serving their clients? And a lot of times people can relate how you treat your customers with how you actually treat your business. So if you have a good website and you take care of your website and you're passionate about your industry, then people will see that. That will convey um, in the communication with people and also through your website. Uh, they can get a sense that you take care of your customers. If you have a really bad website that's kind of scary, it looks like it's dated 20, 30 years old, and typically a lot of people, when they get to a site like that, especially millennials and people that are very uh, tech savvy or modernized or successful, you know, people judge everything instantly when they look at your website within the first couple of seconds. So you want to make a good impression. Your, your website is like the first impression that you make for people looking at your business and they start to think, well, if you take good care of your website, maybe you'll take good care of your customers. If you don't take good care of your website, you might not take good care of your customers. So it's definitely competitive out there. And so you want to be 
uh, evolving your business and growing your company, updating your website, just like, you know, I just saw lines at Apple this past week. Everyone's upgrading their phone because they have like the newest style and they have all these new iPhone watches. Everybody wants the latest technology. Well, when it comes to customers, customers want to deal with companies that have the latest services that are updating their model all the time because uh, the customer wants to do business with someone that they trust and that someone that really has a passion for what they do. So nobody wants to work with a, a half-baked kind of business that doesn't get back to people and definitely is not up to date. So keep that in mind as you guys are you know, going through this information. Um, Google is a search engine, and there's a couple things that determine how you actually come up on Google. And I know for many of you that have tried to go down this road of doing SEO yourself or doing your website yourself or doing social media yourself, to me, it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland. Once you kind of jump down that hole, if you don't know where you're going, you could get lost and you could be wasting your time on a bunch of stuff that does not produce a return on your investment. So it's really important to understand and be able to measure. And, and I repeat that, you have to be able to measure what's going to give you a return on your investment. You know, a lot of people in this day and age, they're on social media and they get caught up in how many likes do I have and how many followers do I have? But if those likes or those followers don't generate any revenue for the company, then you're just wasting your time talking to the wrong people. So you want to be able to talk to the right people that are looking to do business with you. And trying to do everything yourself obviously can become really frustrating if you're an owner of a company. Uh, like I met with a solar company yesterday and the gentleman basically said he wants to do email marketing, he wants to do reputation management, he wants to do Google AdWords, he wants to do Yelp, he wants to do house, he wants to write content, he wants to do all this stuff. It's impossible for one person to do all these things and do all these things really great and then also run and direct the vision of your company. Most of the time when you're an owner of a company, you're dealing with you know, bigger decisions and developing your company and building relationships and you have people that work with you. And smart people understand that you have to leverage the efforts of other people if you wanna get somewhere substantial. So that's really key is don't try to do everything yourself. Hire experts that can do it better than you so that you can do what you do best. So, um, Let's look at the chat. So, so Janelle uh, had a question. I tried to call by phone, but it still says I'm muted. Do you know how I can unmute my phone? Um, there's a microphone for you to unmute your phone. I can try to unmute you right now. Unmute audio. So it could be your, it could be your audio. Um, and Janelle says that you have a California School of Arts. You just opened in August 2017, and you're looking for recruitment interest in our preview days and overall brand, brand awareness across San Gabriel Valley. And then the other person, uh, you, Deb, you guys have a school, and your goal is to improve driving traffic for admission season to our website. Okay, great. So I can talk about those as well. Um, and Deb, if you have a website to put into the chat, uh, that would be great. And then what I can do is I can run some reports while we're going through some of this. Great, so um, this is a little diagram about using a lever. And so one of the things when you guys are building a business, whether that be a business that you want to make millions of dollars or a school or whatever you guys are doing, is you guys want to have some systems, some tools. You want to have a team of people. And you want to have some people that can mentor you to get to where maybe you haven't gotten to before so that you can shortcut your, your path of success. And you want to definitely have a plan. And you want to be able to know that to ask the right questions when it comes to marketing. So with internet marketing, just to give you guys a brief overview, um, because I never know kind of the expertise that people have, uh, there's a lot of different platforms within internet marketing. There's social networks, there's social media, 
there's content marketing, Google Map, search engine optimization, and internet marketing for your business should have a holistic approach. It shouldn't just be having a website, but you should also be creating content. Uh, in this day and age, content and your website being optimized properly is what's actually gonna get you ranked to the top of Google for specific keywords. And uh, we'll go through some of that in a little bit more detail. So there's a lot of great websites out there. And for someone that owns a company, the biggest question is, where do I start? You know, should I be doing YouTube videos? Should I be doing Facebook? Should I be doing Wikipedia? And these are, you know, great questions. And for a lot of people out there, they get confused. So when it comes to content, let's see if we may have a question. So from Deb, you guys are on a website but you're trying to get above the fold. You started a blog a couple of years ago and you're building and expanding content. And then for uh, Deb, you also said you do Facebook and you're moving into WordPress. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing the site first. So when you guys go to optimize the site, there's different elements that include your content, also include different keywords that you guys are targeting, different metadata, and so this is back-end programming that we optimize as a company. Uh, so this is part of it. And your website, you know, the, the foundation of everything is your website because your website has to have good site health. You've got to target specific keywords. You have to make sure you have a good user experience. Something that is built to be able to be shared with different social networks. And also when Google's algorithm crawls through your site, that everything is optimized for the specific keywords that you're going after. When we do marketing, one of the biggest keys is to actually track the metrics and the results. Uh, there's some tools out there that are free, like Google Analytics. Uh, and when you wanna scale up your business, it's important to understand what's working and what's not working in order to actually invest marketing in the right direction. One of the things that I suggest people do is set up some kind of conversion tracking. You can do that through Google Analytics. You can also do that through uh, CallRail, which is call tracking, that could actually track things back to the keyword. And conversion and tracking is just when somebody makes a call and they call you, or they fill out a form, that that's tracked within Google Analytics, and you understand that where that traffic actually comes from. On Google Analytics, you can tell specific keywords that people search, and there's also some other tools out there as well that people use with CallRail. You can even determine the path that somebody took to actually find your phone number to make the phone call, and that's all tracked in a platform where you can actually evaluate that and look at what's generating the phone calls for you. So I think that's pretty cool for people. You know, the crazy part is that 97% of the people out there have no tracking when it comes to conversion tracking. They don't know how to set it up or maybe they set it up poorly. They haven't checked to actually make sure that it is is being tracked, especially when it comes to Google AdWords. You can track conversions in the actual platform. But most people set it up and they put their credit card on there and they set it and forget it. And when it comes to their website, most people don't look at their Google Analytics or where they're actually getting traffic from. So CrawlRail is something that I mentioned. It, this is an example of the dashboard here where you can actually see which is coming from Google Organic, which one is coming from Google Paid, which one is an ad extension, direct mail. So there's different ways that you can market. And um, so that would, you would be able to actually determine like where you're gonna spend your money and so here, right here, you can see, you know, this is a dashboard where you're able to see how many calls are being generated. And within this dashboard, you can also even have the recorded calls so you can actually mark them qualified or not qualified. So there's some really cool tools out there that we utilize in order to actually help our clients get results. Let's see if there's any questions.
Great, so when it comes to SEO, how does SEO work? So here's a bunch of factors that people look at and Google looks at when it comes to Google ranking. You have the on-site optimization, you have the mobile friendliness, is your site mobile friendly? How's the user experience? Do you have a good click-through rate and do you engage customers or clients when they come to your website? You have search accessibility, which means that people find you on other platforms that are related to your specific business. Content, social media. Are you building backlinks? And backlinks just mean that there's other sites that are actually pointing to you. And it's good if they are within the industry. Um, and it's important that they are healthy sites that have a high domain authority. Keyword research the speed of your site, how fast your site actually loads. And then if you're optimized for local optimization, that could be Google My Business, it could be the other 200 directories that are out there where you actually optimize them with content and keywords for people to find you on a local level. So all these factors right here, and even more, influence your SEO. So it's not just one thing. When you look at Google AdWords and Google Organic. Organic searches, they say, take up, you know, when people look at Google, that 80% of the people go to Google Organic and only 20% of the people go to pay per click. And the click through rate on pay per click is 1 to 3%. The click through rate on Google Organic is 10 to 13%. So a lot more people will go to Google, especially if it's something where they're going to spend a bunch of money or it's an important decision. A lot of Educated people know that Google AdWords, you could be fly by night and you could put up an ad tomorrow and compete with any business out there. And with Google Pay Per Click, you get immediate traffic, but you have to know how to manage that because your ads don't run 24 seven, they only run based on your budget. With Google Organic, which is SEO, your, your listing is actually up there 24 seven, depending on how the algorithm crawls your content and your website. And a lot of times it's not an overnight thing. It could take anywhere between three to six months for us to actually get you ranked for Google Organic. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit right now of, um, I'll exit out of here and show you guys actual Google. So let's see. So if we go to Google, because somebody asked what pay-per-click is. When you go to Google search engine and you put in plastic surgery, Beverly Hills, and I'll just make this larger. These up here that say ads, and I don't want to click on it, now typically, a plastic surgeon, if I were to click on this right now, that would cost the business anywhere between $10 to $30 just because I clicked it. That doesn't mean I'm going to call them. It doesn't mean I'm going to do business with them. It just means that I click the ad. So all these right here are what we call pay per click. And that means every click you pay for. Now, there's other factors that come with pay per click. There's factors of having a specific landing page that's gonna actually convert. So I'm not gonna click on that ad, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in that landing page. Now pay-per-click and paying for the actual advertisement is just one, it's one part of advertising. The other part of advertising is actually having a landing page that's gonna work Let's see if this comes up. It's not even coming up. Hmm. So landing page is something that has a call to action. Typically when people do pay-per-click, you know, part of this is people having a page that actually loads quickly. I'm gonna see if uh, this one comes up for this client. So this right here is a landing page, and this is actually on their ads. And what's unique about it is it says, oops, that page can't be found. So somebody is running ads, 
to a page that could create some confusion. Now that's costing them money. Typically with the landing page, um, the whole goal is to get someone's name and information and to have somebody submit. I am submitting them a message because obviously their landing page was broken and I'm gonna see if they need some help. So might as well take advantage of the opportunity. So I will do a, a screen capture here. But a landing page isn't necessarily a home page. A lot of people use their home page to bring people to you for ads. But if your home page isn't convert people and it's not focused for content, a lot of times you won't get a conversion. So it's really important to understand how to convert the clients into a lead or like a phone call of somebody that's qualified to actually do business with you. So that's really important. So if we go back here, these are the ads right here. And these right here are what we call the, uh, this is an ad within Google My Business. And these down here are Google My Business, which is the local listing, which we optimize on a local level. And this has to do with the Google Maps. And this, optimizing this, what we do is we put content in there, we put images, we basically do everything possible to actually get you ranked in a local area, and this comes up on people's cell phone. Cell phones are really key. I would say 60 to 70% of the people use their cell phone right now to do searches, so you wanna make sure you're mobile friendly. This is not your website, this is actually your local listing. So for those of you that are actually on this webinar, if you guys don't have a local listing that's optimized, then you're losing out on business. Down here, is what we call the organic search, which has to do with SEO, content writing, and making sure that your site is optimized. So that's the difference between the Google AdWords and the organic listings. So let me do this for right now because there's only a couple of you guys on here. Let me just see who else we have. So we have Fred, attendees. Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go and look at your site. Since we have a small group, I'm gonna actually go um, to the chat and I'm gonna look at your website for you guys right now. So. First, we'll do Deb. So if we look at this over the last year or so, two years, you know, you have 3,000 people a month when it comes to traffic, but it looks like a lot of your rankings are around the name of your academy. And so what you wanna do in order to actually get a specific keyword, so for example, Deb, if you have a specific keyword that you're trying to rank for, uh, you can type it in the chat. But this right here is a report of where you're positioned. And the volume. So for example, for Passing in a high school, which probably isn't relevant to what you're doing. There's 6,600 searches per month, but you're ranked number 56. For extendedcare.com, there's 4,400 searches a month, but you're ranked number 23. So people that know your name, they already know you. I think what your goal would be is to get some of these keywords up on the top with some kind of content strategy. So let me look at your. So we are responsive site, learning about that K-8 school, independent, some still call private, Pasadena elementary school. Okay. So 
Deb, what are some of the keywords that you would like to rank for when it comes to SEO? You can type those in. Pasadena. So elementary school, Pasadena. I mean, think about what somebody would type to find you, like someone that's never heard of you before. So we have to think about, okay. So would elementary school Pasadena, would that be a relative keyword? Okay. So we're gonna put in that. Now the one thing I see is I don't see you guys in the Google Maps. So in order to actually optimize your Google Maps, what you guys need to do is build citations and actually put some content on there. So do you guys have a physical location that you guys can optimize? Because right now all these other schools are coming up in the, uh, the Google Maps. So that would be one thing that I would recommend. Um, let's go to the organic stuff. So you can actually optimize your Google My Business for elementary school Pasadena if you know how to build citations and build content. I don't know how much every student is worth to you and if you guys have some kind of budget. But if we look down here under elementary school Pasadena, we see a bunch of these schools here are all ranked on the first page. And so your goal is to get ranked somewhere on the first page. And I don't see you guys on the first page. Let's check the second page. I do not see the second page. Okay. So what we would do is we would look at the schools that are ranked. And then what we would do is come up with a strategy that mirrors what they're doing and try to do it even better when it comes to the content strategy and link building. So we can handle the Google My Business citations. We do that as a company. And citations are just another word for links. And that has to do with SEO. So I'll just put this in. What is a Google My Business citation? So a local citation is any online mention of the name, address, and phone number for a local business. Citations can occur on local business directories, on websites and apps, and social platforms. Citations help internet users to discover local businesses and can also impact your local search rankings. So we have software as a company where we actually help you build citations. I would not recommend going and learning something that you don't know how to do. Um, because that's only one factor in a long line of things that are actually necessary when it comes to, um, you know, learning SEO. So let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scan your local listing. Let's see. So we have a platform that we use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your name in here. We'll use this and we'll check your, let's check your local listings. So we'll go to here. And let's see. So here's your contact information. 
what we're going to do is we are going to put this in our tool that we have. Hi. And we are going to do a scan on your school. What this is going to check is some of your local listings to see the accuracy and which ones need to be updated. So nine one one zero seven. This is part of our local SEO program when we come to optimizing your site is the local listings. So we're gonna do a scan. And one of the things that Google looks at is consistency. And if things are up to date. So these are just local listings that help you build SEO and, and your local business and you put content in there. If you look at some of these, your, your phone number needs to be updated. Some of them you're, you're not found on. But these are things that are essential when it comes to local SEO. This is just one little factor. So when I ran a scan on your address and your business, there's 48 location errors detected. And this is part of our local SEO service uh, when it comes to getting you ranked for specific keywords. So that's, that's that as well. Um, the other thing that I'll do while we're on here is we'll do a scan of your website and we can actually check to see if your site has anything that's impacting it when it comes to um, different errors and stuff like that. So we'll delete this one. Delete this one. And what I'll do is I'll put in your website. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a scan to see how your website speed is because that imp that impacts your social your SEO as well. So we'll run this scan here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add your website to check the on-site health. And these are all tools that we use. You know, some of these cost a couple hundred dollars a month that our agency uses, like this one here. You know, you, you can get this, it's $200 a month, but you might as well just hire us for marketing because we know how to use it. So um, this is just one of the tools that we use. We have many different tools. So we're gonna do a quick scan. And there's a lot of different softwares out there. However, if you don't know how to use them and what to use them for, uh, you could spend a lot of time looking at this information and not know what to execute. So this is crawling the pages right now. And let's check on the get matrix. So. Here's your performance report on GT metrics. What this does, it measures the load time and also some of the other scores. Uh, a is like, an A in school is the top grade you can get. You're actually, your page speed score is at E. So that's like after a D is an E and then comes an F. Um, so the average page speed score is 71%. Uh, you're at fifty nine percent, and there's some things when it comes to like optimizing images. Uh, probably some of your images can be compressed. Um, looks like when your browser 
uh, some of the cache could be cleared. There could be some things where we could actually optimize your site as far as scaling images so the site loads faster. And these are like some recommendations and we use like four or five different tools to actually go through um, to help you increase the performance of your website. So this is almost done with the site audit. But um, we can also look at the backlinks of your site. So let's see, HighPoint Academy. Part of SEO is doing backlinks. And you know what we could do is we can actually look at one of your competitors. Let's see, domain overview. So when we look at your main competitors and your backlinks, right now you have 1.7 thousand backlinks and you have 56 referring domains. And these are some of the links that you had, you've acquired or you've lost, like for example, this Pasadena private schools a lost backlink is displayed in the report three months after the date that we couldn't find it. So it looks like you lost that link. This is a new link. This is a no follow link. This one was lost too. So you could go back through here and just kind of look at like what was lost, but some of these links actually help you rank. This says it was lost in June. One of the important things of SEO is having a good link building strategy with healthy sites and also referring domains. So the, here's a bunch of referring domains and the authority score. Those with the larger authority are gonna be better, you know, better for you to link to. Sometimes we'll go in here and determine that some of these aren't that healthy and sometimes it's good to unlink from them. So you just have to look at your backlinking strategy. Um, Let's see if we can go to your on-site health projects. <laughs> so, looks like this is still working. Your website is still breathing, yes. It still has oxygen and it's still breathing. But the question is optimizing, you know, optimizing your site. So it's scanning through your site still, but, um, you know, so these are some of the things we look at. We look at the local citations, you know, we look at what's your backlinking strategy? What kind of content is on your site? So if we look at High Point Academy, I mean, it's, it's, it's a decent site. Your blog, where is your blog? Let's see to the right under about So some of the things that you could do, as I look at all these different tabs that are under your menu, some of these titles could be geared towards specific SEO targets. Uh, when I go here to, oh, head of school blog. See, I was looking for blog, I wasn't looking for head of school. So that could be a little bit confusing.
Hmm. So it's taken a little bit of time to load, maybe because it's a tying into another platform. Okay, so your blog, oi. So you, the blog could be better formatted because when I get here, I just see the High Point Academy bloggers, and I don't really see any links of the articles that have been written. I'm here, but it could your blog could be formatted better, especially with tags and categories, uh, categories of content, and a lot of that stuff helps Google crawl through there and rank it. So the head of the school, community engagement, recent posts. See how long it took me to kind of find out, like where do I find that? So I noticed too when I go through a lot of this content that there's not really a whole lot of linking. Like you could link to the Sierra Madre City. You know, there could be more links built in here. You know, I, the pictures are great, but there's no links at all. It's just a little bit of words here and there. And then the other question is, when you guys are writing content, what, what are you focusing on when you go to write content? So let's see, the recent post, Junior. Um, yeah, like the one thing here, as I look at this blog titled September 4th, if you were to take the words right here, right now they say on Google that the average amount of content that actually helps people get ranked is anywhere between 600 to 1,000 words. So if we were to go into uh, Microsoft, this is probably only not that many words, maybe maybe 50 words. So like the content's got a little bit, be a little bit meatier, and you've got to put like keyword targets in there, and then there should be some strategy within the people that write for your website for it to actually get ranked. Again, you know, you're doing a good job with your brand awareness, but the question is how are new people finding you, people that have never heard of you before? So that's, that's some tips. Let's go to SEM Rush. So still thinking, interesting. Oh. Well, we'll come, we'll come back to that. So Janelle, why don't we look at your website while you're on here? And um, let's see, Janelle. Now Janelle, are you going after the same keywords when it comes to uh, targeting what city and what keywords are you going after? So we're going to put that website in here. Hopefully that's the right website. Domain overview. Another thing I noticed, you know, when, when it comes to content, I don't know why it keeps doing this. Is it csarts.net? Does it redirect to that or? Okay, so obviously people know the name of your school that look you up. There's a lot of searches for that and you guys are, you know, you have good brand awareness. But again, the question is who's finding you that doesn't know about your school? And so when we look at 
the search volume here, again, the search volume, You know, you want to try to go after real estate where there's a lot of search volume and it's relevant. So like, for example, this art schools in California, that to me would be a good target. You're talking about 4,000 searches a month, 4,000 eyeballs a month, and you guys are ranked number 30. So 30 is like the fourth page of Google, maybe the last page of the third page. And um, the question is, how can we move this up? And that comes with optimization and building backlinks and putting content that focuses on that in your local area. Um, so all this right here, just so you guys know, this section right here is the monthly amount of volume that's being searched. So art schools in California gets almost 4,000 searches a month. So if you were position number one for that, let's see who's there right now. Art school is in California. So here's all the ads that are running. And then down here we have Wikipedia cca.edu. I mean, they're literally ranked one, two, three, four, five, six, which is probably right above the fold. So this is where you would want to get, you know, otis.edu. Obviously, a lot of traffic. Let's let's put this one in and see what their traffic is because they're on the first page. So right now. You're ranked number 30. And your traffic's a little under 2,000 people a month. Yeah, I mean, look at this. You know, their traffic's 70, 75,000 searches a month, right? Let's look at if we can find that keyword under your competitor. And I think they were number five or number six, but look at all the stuff they're ranked number one for. This has to do with a, a good content strategy, obviously a lot of traffic, a lot of social media stuff. You know, a lot of schools right now, they're doing um, a lot of podcasts and they're actually interviewing people in other networks to actually build out their network and build out their traffic. But um, as you can see, this school is pretty, they have a lot of first place rankings, a lot. Maybe we go to page six. Oh, a lot of second page. I mean, they may be really super huge compared to you, but um, you know, they have 400 pages of keywords that they rank for. So I think we're almost there, let's see. California College of Arts. Yeah, but I, th I think you can see my point, you know, like it's, if you can get the high volume keywords and get ranked for them, there are people that are, they, they're not going to know your brand. And uh, it's a lot of traffic that you can tap into. Run a Google banner display ad campaign. You could do that. You just want to track conversions. The thing with display campaigns is you got to be really careful because they run them on all the mobile phone platforms. This includes games and apps and all sorts of stuff. So if you're actually going to run a Google banner display ad campaign, you want to make sure you have someone that actually manage your AdWords that can do that effectively. Otherwise, you're going to miss a lot of your budget is just going to be wasted. You'll be everywhere. 
but it's gotta be targeted. The other thing that you might wanna do is actually target some of your competitors' websites, and you can run a content remarketing strategy with specific domains. So if someone does visit your competitor's website, that perhaps your ad would come up because it reads you know, their cookies. Um, let's go ahead and do a scan um, on, on your website as well. Chat, chat, chat. Okay, so. I mean, ads are great, but you can waste a lot of money really fast. And so if it's not focused and you don't have someone that manages it, you could end up spending a couple thousand dollars and then wonder why is it that you didn't get any conversions. Um, one of the things I would suggest, let me just look at this. I like the fact that you use video on your homepage because video is very engaging. But I do have some ideas for you if you want to reach out to me. I have some ideas that have to do with podcasts um, because there's a lot of people that get traffic from podcasts. For example, um, a friend of mine was interviewed by this person and they have tons of traffic. And so doing podcasts where you can link in other people is advantageous. I'm gonna put this in here. This person has lots of traffic and um, what they do is they interview authorities within different networks. Like this could be an author of a book. It could be somebody that's a, a specific teacher. And they don't have to be in California. This could be somebody that's in New York. Uh, you can interview celebrities. And just by having these podcasts and then doing the blogs underneath of it can actually help you guys rank, not only for your own stuff, but you could come up under the person that you interview and you could grab more traffic that way too, which would then direct traffic back to your website. So a lot of people are doing this where they interview other people, they do a podcast or they do what we call a Facebook live stream between two people. And then that is that, that actually will help expand your reach and your network as you go through this. Like for example, look at this person's blog, just as an example for Deborah. When you're on this blog, there's a podcast, there's a good amount of content. I mean, if you look at the content right here, you have probably 400 to 600 words. Over here on the right, it's really easy to actually see the different titles. And then you can click on something else. And again, lots of content and an audio and a video and links. This is a really well-rounded page. Um, you know to look at that as a model, as far as being like a modern format for posting content and blogs and podcasts. So, um, and podcasts, I'll give you guys um, some ideas about podcasts. So for example, I met somebody last week that does reviews for cruises on how to travel cheaply and they started a podcast like four years ago. And now they're actually sponsored by all these companies. Them and their brother make a full-time income. They found, people found their podcast and they were just doing audios. Uh, there's also another TV show that HBO just picked up. They found somebody on a podcast just kind of talking about their life and things they were going through. And now it's an HBO TV show. So sometimes you can't determine what the work is gonna get you, but if you keep putting the content out there and you keep sharing the documentation on your business, eventually the right people are gonna find you that have never, that, that don't know you, you know, and that's really what you're going for. The people that know you, they already know you. If you wanna grow the revenue in your, your school and your business, then what you do is you, you bring in other people that have a big network and you tap into that network through using the content 
you can highlight that person, give them an opportunity to be interviewed, which most celebrities and people that are um, that have like a lot of authority within your industry or people that have a lot of credibility, they love interviews and they love doing Facebook lives and streaming video and YouTube videos and all this stuff because they know that they need to use it to capture a bigger audience. And now you can tap into their network as well. So let's go back um, here. And for the last 10 or 15 minutes, we'll, we'll finish up, but let me, uh, let me go back to here and I'm going to do, I'll do an audit on yours too. Um, when it comes to the performance, let's see how your site is loading. Analyze this, like the movie, and um, let's go back here to the projects, SEO audit. Oh, okay. So Deborah, continuing because it took a little bit of time, and I'll do. If you were to look at your on-site audit right now. Uh, you get a 57% out of 100%. Uh, you have about 189 errors. You have a lot of pages with duplicate meta descriptions, which is going to impact your SEO. 40 issues with duplicate title tags, 15 pages with duplicate content. So all this stuff impacts your SEO. Uh, if you look over here at the warnings, you have um, you know HTTPS pages uh, leading to HTTP. It, Tells you how to fix it here, um, but there's some new formats with Google as far as how things are searched. Um, a lot of your pages have a low word count. So your word count, like 31, 188, like your word count needs to be beefed up. Um, eight pages don't have meta descriptions. So really to optimize the site properly, and this is part of what we do when it comes to SEO. Um, 14 pages are blocked from crawling. Six pages have more than one H1 tag. Blocked external resources in the robot.txt, which has to do with, th this impacts SEO too and how your site is crawled. And um, blocked external resources are resources like JavaScript. They're hosted on an external website and they're blocked from crawling by a disallow. So there's different things that could be fixed on your site and you could obviously increase your site health. So when we look at the sgb.cscarts.net, your page speed score is pretty good, but there's some other things that could be, you know, optimized. Your load time is kind of slow. It doesn't load as fast as it could be, but um, 3.1 seconds is not bad. Why don't we put this into the projects and we'll we'll scan your site too just to see how it adds up here. Site audit. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys to gain some insights. You know, the key when it comes to when it comes to um, ranking is not the name of your company or how nice your website looks. It actually has to do with a lot of the backend coding. So what I'll do is I'll put this in the scan. And then if you guys have any questions that you wanna ask in the meantime, I wanted to make sure you guys got a good amount of value from this for your own business because you know there's not a lot of people on here, but um, I figured I'd cater it more towards your website and look at, you know, I'm, I'm happy to schedule an hour session with each of you to go through some ideas what I would do if I was marketing. And, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for you to hire our company to help you take your site to the next level. Even if we just guide you and you do like a minimal package, we can, we can contribute a lot of really great stuff um, that, 
that could help maybe some of your other departments when it comes to actually coming up with content and different things like that? So um, Janelle and Deb, do you guys have any other questions uh, while, I'm, while I'm scanning this site here? Let's see, we'll go back to this. While it's scanning, I'll, I'll go through a few more slides. Part of what we face are fake reviews from kids on Google. Taking those down or reporting them doesn't work. Well, yeah, you have to find some kind of documentation in order to actually get those re reviews removed. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of um, a couple of clients that we've worked with uh, in the past. And um, because really at the end of the day, it's, it's about results, right? I mean, you wanna get results. Uh, this is one client, when they started with us, they were ranked number 25, now they're number one. Ranked number 81, now they're number one. Ranked number 95, now they're number one. Ranked number 31, now they're number two. I mean, to get these kind of results and have a position go up 111 spots, is pretty significant. And this client here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine out of 10 of their keywords that weren't even on the first page, we got into the first three spots. And really, in my opinion, like documentation beats conversation. You could talk SEO and marketing all day long, but when it really comes down to it, I truly believe that you've got to measure stuff in your business, whether it's SEO, whether it's Salespeople that are on your team, whether it's people that are in your office, you've always got to measure the metrics because, you know, people will always lie and maybe tell a fib and numbers never lie. Numbers are numbers, right? So you got to look at the numbers. Uh, we have pay-per-click services. Let's see. Local SEO. Facebook packages. Uh, one of the things that we do is we do, we can do Facebook ads, which is geo-targeted. We could actually promote your page. We could actually create conversions from that. Uh, when we do a consultation, you know, when we work with the business, there is no one size fits all. So a lot of it is about taking the symptoms and prescribing the medicine. And the biggest question you have to ask yourself is how important is your business? You know, a lot of times we can't measure the business that we didn't get um, because we didn't do marketing, but marketing needs to be an essential element of growing your revenues. So if you want to generate like $20 million a year, you better put a substantial amount of money into marketing. You know, like one of our clients was spending between pay-per-click and SEO, they were spending roughly about $20,000 a month but they were doing $10 million a year in sales. So it, it typically works out. And I think a lot of people are just scared. They're scared to start, but they end up costing themselves so much money because they don't start and they rely upon themselves to get, I mean, if you wanna generate $10,000 a month more, then it's good to spend at least $1,000 to get the other $9,000. But a lot of times when we come across people that own companies, a lot of times they're riding the budget and I get that it's important to save money. But what ends up happening is they end up costing themselves so much more money than what they're saving, right? I mean, one client on Google for any kind of business, whether it be like a school or a community, or I remember one time I was speaking to a guy who spent, he spent, uh, he was spending a couple hundred dollars a month on pay-per-click and he didn't run it right. And so he got no results whatsoever. He didn't have conversion tracking. And I remember, I remember talking to him and saying, Hey, how much does every student yield? And he said, well, each student 
is, you know, eight hundred dollars for the quarter, and he said he had five thousand. I think he had something like a couple thousand spots. And so when I did the math, I was like, wow, that's four hundred or six hundred thousand dollars in revenue that you could generate. Why are you only spending two hundred dollars a month? And he wasn't tracking anything. In fact, the person that went through the account, because the guy said he wasn't spending any money, they just assumed that he wouldn't spend any money. But when I framed it in a way where he understood it and I said, well, if you could get 20 new students every month at $800, that's $16,000 a month times 12 months, that would come, come out to almost an extra two or $300,000 in revenue per year. And so he saw the value, he actually signed up. We, we actually raised his budget from a couple hundred to a couple thousand. And we were able to actually help him fill his school with um, students. But the point I'm trying to make is nobody sees the value if you're not getting results. And if you hire a professional person, then what's going to happen is you're going to get professional results as long as they track everything. So that's part of the key. So let's go back to, and we'll end the webinar shortly because I know it's um, 11, 11, 12. But here's the uh, sgv.csarts.net. If you look at the warnings, you guys have a lot of issues with your website when it comes to optimizing for SEO. Blocked internal resources, 1,400 issues, 23 pages have duplicate H1 title tags, 36 pages have duplicate meta descriptions. So a meta description is a short summary of a web page's content that helps the search engine understand what page is about and can be shown to the users in search results. This means in Google, right? So if you have 36 pages that have broken meta descriptions, then now what, what, what is Google gonna rank, right? Six issues with duplicate title tags, no redirects, um, two pages have duplicate content issues, so there's a bunch of stuff that could be optimized on your site too. Forty-five pages that have more than one H1. A lot of this stuff impacts SEO. A lot of times people don't even realize it. So one of the things with schools, with budgets, I may have some creative ways where I can actually help you raise your budget through doing podcasts with other networks of people because sometimes those other people, they will contribute to schools. For example, if you said to them that you had, let's see, Okay, so for example, let's just say that both of you guys started a podcast, and this one here has um, 22, let's see if we can find one a little bit more meaty. So if you look at podcasts and education, there's so many podcasts on here. Now imagine that your podcast had 100,000 downloads on iTunes. What kind of sponsorship would you be able to, what kind of sponsorship would you be able to get for your school of people that actually, you know, would want to actually advertise, right? So if you could find even just five partners that contribute $500 a month, that could be 25 hundred dollars a month that you could put towards SEO 
But, you know, it's kind of like field of dreams. If you build it, they will come, but you got to build it first. And you have to have that vision in mind that not only could you get sponsorships from schools, but if you have the traffic in your city, you could have somebody else advertise on your website. You could form partnerships with people. You guys could go out and you could, you could get interviews and have like an outreach team that would actually go and get interviews with local TV stations. So there's different things you can do to actually build the content from a video perspective, from an audio perspective, from a content perspective that would give your organization more value. The other thing that you could do too, is there any organizations that Janelle or Deb, that is there any large organizations that you feel if they were to promote your school that you would get more students? Any large organizations that if they were to promote your school that you would get more students? Like let's say they put a banner ad on their website and said, we love their school, go and visit this school. Any, any people, you, City of Hope, okay, great. So City of Hope, they have their own goals too, right? City of Hope. The so City of Hope has their own goals and they have their own website. But let's just say that you actually contacted somebody at City of Hope and you interviewed that person on a podcast. And let's just say that you had a charity tied in with City of Hope too. And by going to City of Hope, let's just go to theirs. By you doing a podcast and actually interviewing City of Hope, that they actually shared your podcast interviewing them on their social media. So on their Twitter, on their Facebook, in their email marketing, you know, if they send an email out to the, all the subscribers for City of Hope, all their major sponsors, all their celebrity contacts, that you did a collaborative email or a collaborative podcast between you and them. Let's go to their Facebook. So now there's a podcast between, let's just say you contacted somebody on the board at City of Hope and you wanted to interview the City of Hope and it was all about City of Hope and what amazing stuff they're doing, but you're doing this as part of your content strategy on your podcast. When you go to City of Hope, let's see. Like. City of Hope is also connected with other people, but they have 186,000 people that like this and follow this. So now you do this amazing podcast on audio where you do a live stream featuring City of Hope, which is like a modern way to actually interview somebody without actually bringing out a news camera. And, or you even talk about City of Hope and you mention City of Hope, even if they don't do the interview and you share your podcast with this well-written blog and an amazing video about the City of Hope, and they post it on their social media, and it hits 185,000 people from the City of Hope, right? That's a way to work collaborative with someone like the City of Hope. Now, out of 186,000 people, yeah, so bandwidth is obviously an issue. Uh, you could do a video. You could even do an article on your blog. Uh, you don't have to do a podcast. Uh, one of the reasons why I like podcasts and Zoom is you could just send somebody a link and you could do the interview at the office. But you could also write an article. So, for example, here's somebody. Let's check this out. A recipe for pound cake. Interesting. 
Another idea you could do is you could contribute content to the City of Hope blog, and you could write a thousand or two thousand word blog that has something to do with the City of Hope. So now the City of Hope has free content, and that content would be linked back to you. So instead of this link here, it would go back to your school. And this is actually ranked back to the American Cancer Society. So the American Cancer Society is actually getting links and inbound links from the City of Hope. So having the link strategy is important, but you could just contribute content. So any other questions before we conclude? Um, hopefully this has been helpful uh, as far as content. Now, what you can do is you can reach out uh, to us and we're happy to schedule an hour uh, for your specific business with the intent is that we can help you with something. We can help you kind of start the ball rolling and going down the right direction so you don't waste your time and you have more bandwidth because you got to think outside the box. And um, just so you guys know, we're going to have an in, uh, in-person seminar. So if you want to bring out other people, you can. Uh, the next events that we're having, I know that we're having, right now it's September, but October 25th, we're going to have one, I think, between Arcadia and San Gabriel. And then on November 8th, we're going to have another one in uh, Monrovia. So. I encourage you guys, you know, if you can share this, I'll send you the link. Um, any feedback would be great. I'm gonna put my information down here for you guys. If you guys wanna send me an email or if you have any additional questions. And, Really, you gotta you gotta think about um, you know what what does it cost you as a business, right? Because I want you to really put this in perspective. As a business, you know what does it cost you to save money? Because I get that you guys sometimes there's you know there's limited budgets and you can only deal with what you can deal with and you got to get approvals, but start somewhere small and work your way down the path so that we can at least show you some kind of results. Like we can help you with your content, we can help you with a strategy, we can help you optimize your on-site, you know, your website, making sure it's mobile friendly. We can help you get these keywords up to the top uh, for, for you guys. And, um, but you gotta start somewhere and you gotta get it outside of yourself, right? You need to bar the efforts of other people, if that makes any sense. So yeah, make, make better choices and um, you know, try, try our company for 90 days. I mean, take us for a test drive and you definitely will see the results. Um, so with that, hopefully you guys had a great time uh, getting some valuable information. I've recorded this, so I'll send you guys the recording.